You're listening to The Kelly Track Show. I'm your host, Kelly Track, author, coach, and eternal optimist. Each week, I'll give you lessons to elevate your life, reclaim your personal power, and truly awaken and transform. Your best life starts right now. Hi friends, welcome back to the show. Thank you as always for listening and tuning in. I so hope you like the new updated look and sound of the Kelly Track Show. It has officially changed. We are no longer Heal with Kelly Track and 100% the Kelly Track Show. I wanted to update it to make sure that I could be bringing you the content that I wanted to deliver to you, that I know you are ready for and I kind of felt like heal was sort of tying us back to staying focused on healing and sort of my old health story. And I wanted to make sure that I am giving you guys the content that you're asking for. And that has to do much more with mindset and personal development and growth and awakening. And therefore I have switched it to the Kelly track show. So I hope you enjoy And I hope you like the little tropical house beats in the song. I am, I'm a little bit obsessed with it, (laughs) but we'll see how long that lasts because I got so tired of the last music because as the podcast producer and host, I listen to this show more than anybody else guaranteed. Unless I have some amazing super fans out there who listen to this like three times per episode. (laughs) Now, support for today's episode comes from Your Best Life. Your Best Life is my eight-week online live training program where I guide you step-by-step on how to craft a life you love by starting with the mindset work first. Okay, I know what you're thinking. You're like, whoa, did she just support her own show? Yep, I so did. I wanted to make sure that you know about this course in particular, and I want to make sure that you know about the evergreen option and the promo code that I am offering you exclusively. This course is all about teaching you how to do the internal work first before you go out into the world and take action. Because when you get the inside right first, the outside falls and clicks into place. You really can only live your best life or your dream life or fully align and live with your life's vision after you've done the mindset work first. That's truly the secret. It is the fast track to getting what you want and having it sooner in your hands, it's because you do the mental work first and you get so clear on the insides and you totally let go of what's holding you back. You overcome the fear, the doubt, the worry, the self-limiting beliefs, the blocks, the mental blocks, the physical blocks, the spiritual or emotional blocks, and I help you clear it and pick a new set of belief systems. After that, I'm going to teach you how to live your life in a whole new way. So if you're feeling stagnant or stuck or kind of confused or like you're in a rut, it's time to totally shake things up and adopt a new way of being, one with more ease and joy and flow. And I'm going to be teaching you all about how to take the feelings-based approach and how to lead your life from a little bit of a different way and tune inward for the answers when you're seeking them and listen to your intuition and your body and what your body is telling you to do. Because after you've mastered your mind, I want you to be able to really tap into that intuition and that internal guidance system so that you go out into the world and take action that is centered and rooted from within. So if this work in this course speaks to you and if it calls to you and you're getting the whole body hell yes over there, you should totally come and join us this year. You can use the promo code podcast10 at the checkout to get 10% off your order and get an exclusive invite to the group live coaching session with me. And you'll get to ask me all of your burning questions and we'll work together one-on-one to make sure that you get your questions answered. This whole course is eight hours. It includes eight modules over eight weeks, and it's nitty gritty details and a recipe as to how you implement this stuff into your life. The absolute key differentiator between my work and other people's work is that I love to give you guys implementable, actionable steps. That is my jam. Like the way I describe my coaching is that if this was driver's ed, we would start in the car first and I would teach you the fundamentals and the layout of the car and how it works. And I would get you driving on day one. This is not about making you sit in a lecture for, you know, four weeks before we get into the car. It's about putting you in the car now and starting there. That's my favorite thing to do with you guys because it gets you results much faster because you can put it into motion right away. 
So if you're ready to join your best life and if you want to take the Evergreen course, pre-order is only until February 25th, 2018, and that's going to close at midnight. And then after that, the price is going to go up to full price for good. So if you want those discounts and the promo code DEFS get in before the 25th on the closing date. And if we're working together this year, I am so excited to see you rock your best life. So I'm officially back from vacation. I am back from Hawaii. Oh man, Hawaii is my favorite place. <laughs> I could truly write some Shakespearean love sonnets about how much I am obsessed with Hawaii. <laughs> you know, there's nothing like a vacation to come back refreshed and recharged and to give you a whole new leash and perspective on your life and your current situation. One of the things I am working on this year that I want to be teaching you how to do as well is to bring your vacation time into your everyday life. And part of my every single day leading up to vacation, I realize that vacations are a very unsustainable approach because before I went to Hawaii, I was really working around the clock to get your best life up and running. And I had a lot of teamwork done on that and there were so many pieces and parts of your best life that took me a really long time as one could imagine with an online course and I want to help you guys and I'm helping myself live in a more sustainable way without this sort of idea of like sprinting 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 okay two-week vacation laying on beach doing nothing sprinting 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 okay two-week vacation doing absolutely nothing and how we can incorporate that vacation mode into our every single day. So I made this post on Instagram and I want to dive a little bit deeper into a couple of my aha moments from this trip. Okay, number one, rest is underrated. Man, I don't know why as a society in the Western world, we are so obsessed with hard work and working hard and the grind and the hustle. You know, rest is so important. It's so critical to take more breaks and take more breaths and slow down. And it really doesn't matter how fast you go. It actually doesn't. It only matters how much you love the process and that you're savoring every single part of the unfolding. The journey is truly just as important as the destination. You know, I was listening to Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now while I was in Hawaii, and he talks about how when you are you know, romanticizing the future and you're leaning into the future and your goals and your vision, when you experience that moment, when you like cross the finish line or you get that job or you buy that house, that moment will be happening in the now. And the future is just comprised of a bunch of moments of now. And everything is just a now and now and now and now. And even those ideas in the future, when they happen, they'll just be moments of now and now and now and now. And that is so true. You know, we we are really just on this one big evolving journey. And even though we think that these markers are end markers and finish lines, they're actually just going to be present moments of the now. So why not enjoy the now more fully? Thank you, Eckhart, to that. And if you saw my Instagram story, I <laughs> totally fell asleep listening to his book. It's actually really good. But um, if you listen to the audio version, he narrates it. So he's got that bit of the underlying German accent. And I like to listen to work on audio in double speed. So his accent plus double speed plus the hot Hawaiian sun and the lawn chair coupled and equal to me falling asleep for 30 minutes of the power of now. But don't let that trip you. It's actually a really great book. And I found that listening to it on audio was so much easier to digest. And I actually love it when authors narrate the book themselves. So back to my point on rest, you know, rest is where the ideas flow into us. Like think about and reflect the times in your life when you had five back-to-back -back meetings in a day. By the fifth meeting, did you ever come out of that meeting feeling super recharged and like you had this amazing unicorn aha idea and you were like, oh my God, after these five amazing meetings, I have this million dollar idea to implement into my life and business? Uh, probably not. Five back-to-back -back meetings where you only have like two minutes to go out and quickly pee and come back is not exactly the most replenishing activity. And when we take that rest and when we take that intentional time to slow down, 
that is where the ideas flow and the intuition can actually speak up to us and when we can connect fully deeper into ourselves. When we're chasing and going and pushing and doing, we forget the being part. And with being still and resting and quieting and tuning inwards, that is where we get the ideas. So Taking that rest is actually highly productive for whatever you're doing, for your life, for your business, for your work, for your career, for your love life, whatever it is. That rest is so underrated because it is what we need to fuel up and recharge and replenish. And it's like, you know, laying in the bathtub at the end of the night with some Epsom salts and some essential oils and a bath bomb or whatever you like and recharging in that space so you have those good ideas that flow to you. One of the ways we can get this vacation life in our everyday is to really truly incorporate those bits of rest into our everyday. If you're coming to your best life this year, I'm going to be teaching you about success rituals and how to incorporate that into your day more fully for you to fuel up in those times where you know that it's starting to get a little bit crazy. Now, the second aha moment that I had was to seek silence and space. Also so underrated in our high-tech sped-up world. Quite often, we so forget to take that pause and go inwards. And silence and space goes hand-in-hand with rest. We have a million things to do. We have our buzzing phones, the little pings of the new bits of email that come in, and we are always attached Silence and space is really critical to connecting with ourselves and therefore the universe and the wholeness of our world and remembering that we're all one and we are so out of touch with that when we are always reaching for the iPhone to go on Instagram for like the 50th time of the day. One of the ways you can bring this space and stillness of a vacation into your everyday life is to truly see what bits of technology can get reduced and lessened and what notifications you can take off. If you have email on your phone, I would highly recommend deleting it. If you can take off all the Instagram notifications and the Facebook and the messenger and the email notifications off your phone, try it. Give it a go, even if it's for one day. And maybe you have a corporate phone and maybe you have a personal phone. Do this on your personal phone for one day. It's okay if you don't change the settings on your corporate phone. That's totes cool. If you're expecting a client call, keep the thing on. Don't worry about that. Try this as a tiny experiment in your everyday personal life and take those notifications off your phone so that you have that space and silence and rest and in the blank spots between moments and in those gaps and pauses between your day have that space and time for yourself to just think not to just go to instagram and move your thumb over to the icon and refresh automatically as this subconscious pattern that we are so addicted to doing i know for myself quite often i need silence and space and quiet time and rest. And I didn't realize until my vacation where I actually took like a two week blackout period for any kind of interviews or coaching calls or major meetings. I did as much as I could to actually take a block out time. I didn't realize how much I talk on a daily basis between coaching and working and teaching and podcasting and YouTubing and filming your best life and getting time to record. I do so much talking and teaching and there needs to be more time in my life for that space and stillness. And that was an aha moment that I had on this trip, especially given that major sprint for your best life to meet the deadlines, to have it ship on the dates, to have it ready to go and to get the work teed up with other people. And that silence and that space is where the real magic happens. And I had so many good ideas and new ideas for what's coming in 2018 out of this two week rest period. So if you can incorporate more silence and space, even if it's like for five minutes, you don't have to just meditate for five minutes. Even if it's like sitting on your bed for five minutes or laying down on your bed for five minutes or reading a magazine for five minutes in a a space of quietness away from the laptop, allow those ideas to come to you. Because quite often when you're just having fun and you're resting and you're in a more restorative mode, that is when the million dollar ideas drop into your head. Number three, play is productive. 
oh my goodness, play is productive. I wish they taught us this in school. You know, I was always conditioned to believe that hard work is productive. And one of the beliefs that I am taking on and a new belief that I am shifting my brain to think and that one I encourage you to try on as well is that play is productive. Quite often we get a sense of guilt and worry when we are not working and when the clock is on but we're not doing anything and we are taking you know a longer break or a longer period to go play or we spent the weekend going on a weekend trip versus sitting down and crunching the work do you know what I mean we get so guilty and shameful and we start to be hard on ourselves when we take that time to play but the play is productive oh my goodness it really is because that's when we refuel that's when we replenish that's when we get those ideas. That's when we get the awakening moments to change something up, to shift the name of the podcast, to, you know, start dating again on Tinder, to, you know, take more intentional rest breaks, to go try that new restaurant that we've wanted to try, to finally reach out to that mentor that we've been wanting to connect with, to take that coaching program, to do that thing, to buy that dress you've been looking at, at Aritzia. (laughs) That's when we get the intuitive hits to go after what we want. So you want to make sure that you are playing to really make your life feel more like a vacation because if we can add more fun and play into the everyday, we won't be so thirsty and deeply yearning for this vacation after those really aggressive long sprints. Number four, just because everyone else lives their life in one way, it does not mean that you have to follow it. Okay, I could talk about this point for a long time. The quote-unquote normal and regular world has a very structured approach to work in the Western world. I encourage you to reflect on your ideals and your notions and your beliefs of what quote-unquote work looks like to you. A lot of people might say it looks like you know, living in the burbs, getting in your car and commuting to downtown to working a nine to five, taking a one hour lunch break, finishing up, driving back home in traffic, coming back to the burbs and then like sitting and watching Netflix until the evening and then doing it all over again. Now, just because other people work in that way, it doesn't mean that you have to work in your, in that way. You can choose to work in whatever way you want. If you want to believe that hard work is the only way to success, that's what you're going to get. If you believe that you can only be successful if you work, you know, 9am to 9pm on your entrepreneurial gig, that's what you're going to get. If you believe that you can only achieve success by hitting a burnout four to five times a year, that is what you're going to get. Just because those are frequently seen in quote unquote regular, normal Western culture, that doesn't mean that you have to work that way. Pick a different way of thinking and pick a new belief when it comes to work. Reevaluate the stories that you have in your head around work and how work needs to look like and feel like and sound like and taste like. Like if it needs to taste like bagels from the downstairs, <laughs> I don't know, coffee shop. And what if your work tasted like chocolates in the morning? And just reevaluate and question everything and every single story that you have about work and how much coffee you need and how far you need to commute and how hard you must push and grind to get what you need done. See if there are better stories that you can tell about the work situation that you want to craft for yourself. Even if you have a corporate job, even if you work a nine to five, even if you work retail at Nordstrom's, see what new stories you can take on that could shift your work situation in even just a couple of degrees. Also take the time to honor that the way in which you work might look different. Maybe instead of a one hour lunch break at your nine to five, you want to take a bunch of mini breaks throughout the day. Or maybe you love to just work all in one go and then leave an hour earlier at the end of the day. Your work can look different. It doesn't have to look like anybody else's. How you study for your exams for your university or college classes could be so different. Maybe you like to study 
in the middle of the night. Maybe that's your jam. Maybe you like to study between classes. Maybe you don't like to take your homework home. Maybe you want to do everything on campus. And once you leave to go home for the night on that bus, work ends there. Or maybe you just want to hang out with your friends at school and you don't want to do any work between your classes and you just want to connect and chat with your friends. And all the studying happens when you're at home, when you're in that quiet space of your own. Whatever your style is, honor it, accept it, and make sure to remind yourself that it's okay to have a different style than other people. And how your work life looks compared to anyone else's doesn't really matter. Now, I know I get to run my own company and that's very different from most people and that my everyday looks really different, but part of my journey has included owning my story of how I work and part of how I work involves lots of vacations. I love vacations and I need that time to intentionally rest and actually unplug. My work style is is really different than most people's. It's really different from pretty much all of my friends, from my family, um, and it's a little bit different from my partners. I used to feel kind of guilty is the word I would use when I would tell people that I was going on another vacation. And whenever I tell people that I have just come back from a vacation and I'm planning the other one, sometimes I feel that other people perhaps judge me or they give me their stories of how they think work should look like or how it should feel like or what my hustle needs to be like when in fact I can control all of the stories. I can control how I work. I can schedule out my days and I choose how I want to live. So if you feel like other people are putting their work stories on you, question that. Take time to reflect and think, hmm, is this really my story or is someone else just trying to put their story on me? If you want to take more weekend ski trips and you're still in school, and if your parents are like, you should be studying on the weekends for your final exams, is that really your story or is that somebody else's norm? Just because other people work in one way doesn't mean that you have to work in that way too. You can craft whatever kind of life and story you want for yourself. Number five, don't buy the Wi-Fi package. Oh man, I could talk about this one for a long time. When I went to Hawaii, I intentionally only got Wi-Fi for two days. That's it. I got the phone plan for two days and I left it at that because I knew that if I had it for every single day, I would be doing work. When the fact was that I wanted to make sure that I was taking time off work and that I can only think about kellytrack.com for so much of the day and then I need to go off. If you don't buy the Wi-Fi package, you can enjoy the present moment so much more. You really can. You can enjoy the sand. You can enjoy the sun. You can enjoy the palm trees. You can people watch. But when you have that Wi-Fi package, you're going to be so inclined to go on your Instagram. You're going to be inclined to go on Facebook. You're going to be inclined to do a bunch of Instagram stories. And it's going to really pull you out from the present moment. And in the present moment, that's when the ideas drop in. And that's when we, you know, see those two people walking down the beach and one person's maybe wearing that hat. And it kind of gives you maybe an idea about your future hat company and like how a hat could be better designed. Like that kind of stuff comes out of the present moment. It doesn't come out of an Instagram scroll. So sometimes not buying the Wi-Fi package can really help you tap in into that vacation time. And even if there are days in your everyday life when you don't do Instagram check-ins or you take intentionally time off from the computer and having like a a no screen Saturday or a no screen Sunday, that is a way you can bring the vacation mode into the everyday life. Plus, don't be afraid to put your iPhone or your Android on airplane mode because when you put it on airplane mode, it really can help you feel like that $700 iPhone is kind of just like a fancy alarm clock because it doesn't really do anything anymore. Do you know what I mean? And it helps you become so much more productive and you don't have to worry in the back of your mind if it's going to ring or if it's going to buzz or if you're waiting on a call. It's just on airplane and you can go do your thing. So my friends, those are my tips for you. I hope that's helpful for you today. I'm just going to quickly recap it here in a summary. So number one, rest is underrated. Take more breaks, take more breaths. Number two, seek silence and space. Yes. Number three, play is productive. The universe works a lot faster when you're having fun. Number four, just because everyone else lives their life in one way, it doesn't mean you have to follow it. 
And number five, don't buy the Wi-Fi package and turn that airplane mode on more often. So my friends, that is the episode for today. I hope you loved it. And if you want to work with me some more and learn more about taking on a new way of being and living life in a better, easier way by starting with the internal mindset work first. I would so love to have you this year in your best life. And don't forget to use the promo code podcast 10 for an extra 10% off and an invite to the free live group coaching call with me when you buy the evergreen course. So until next time, I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you back here soon. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening today. If you love this episode, please take a second to share it with somebody that you know needs to hear this message. And if you feel so called and so moved, please write an honest review of what you think about this podcast in iTunes and leave me some stars. That would truly help me out on my journey to helping millions and millions of people. And until next time, have a lovely day and I'm so excited to see you back here soon.